Deputy Black SN850 heat and speed test this time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Builder Buy. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, let me get the test started. We got the four screens to put up, just like we've done last time. And then I'll explain to you what's going on. Okay, we're going to be doing a heat and speed test on the WD Black SN850. I had to figure out what drive letter this drive was on, uh, so we're going to get the test started. We've got the uh, crystal disk mark. Above us, you're going to see a split screen with those two applications. We're going to go to two screens. The first thing I had to figure out was what the drive letter assignment was on. And the second thing I had to figure out was which drive I was looking at in hardware info sensor data. And that'll split it just about right. Now, based on temperature, if you'll notice in the upper left, I'm going to go ahead and initialize the test. We're on drive letter G. We've got a one gig. We have a one terabyte drive, so we've got a one gig cache. When you run the test, you need to have that set for the size of the cache or larger. So you flush that out. So we'll initialize the test on drive letter G, all. I will go back over here to drive temperature. We'll zoom back in, and you'll see that on two screens. Now, if you'll notice on the right to me, we're looking at the uh, FLIR camera. And the FLIR camera, there's two things you can notice here. One right here, we've got a digital thermometer with an NTC probe. It doesn't vary much. It's running at 32.7 degrees uh, centigrade or Celsius. But if you notice on the FLIR camera, that dark spot is a thermal sensor, and that drive is heating up. And if you'll notice, there's a targeting mark right there, and that says 48.5 degrees. And if we look at the uh, temperature reading on the top right corner, it shows us at 54 degrees Celsius. So 49.5 on the camera, on the FLIR camera, 55 degrees. And if I had any doubt, there's the Seagate Fire CUDA. And the other drive is staying steady at 31. So we're staying at 57 degrees, and it's interesting, we've only, we're only getting one sensor. Last time we had two sensors on the other drive. So 59 degrees, and this is pushing 53, and that's hovering at 54, 55. I'll leave that alone. I'm, just, I'm looking at the different drives to see how things react. Uh, what's curious, if you notice the two drives as an observation, the drive on the left is a boot drive. That's the Seagate Barracuda. It's cool, but it's got a longer heat sink on it. The shorter heat sink is on the second drive, and the reason for that is because there's a single lane slot right in front of that NVMe drive. So it's got a short heat sink on it. Now, this particular WD Black, as I looked at the back, the observation, there is no extra uh, thermal conductivity plate. The largest thermal conductivity plate was on the Sabrent drive. It was on the front. The one on the um, Samsung was targeted to the two memory chips and the controller. So we're at 35.5 on the digital thermometer. The FLIR camera is reading 54 degrees, and I've got a heat reading signature of between 55 down to 30.8. But right on the drive, and as the connector goes, the screw's on this end that secures the drive to the motherboard. So the connector's on this end. So we would have, we would have controller, cache, and the two memory chips. So we're targeting right on the second memory chip, 55.9 degrees and we're getting 61, 62 degrees over here on the software. I was really surprised that we weren't able to use, in fact, it's interesting, I tried the Sabre software on this drive, it couldn't even see the drive, it didn't even show a temperature period, which makes me wonder if Western Digital wrote the software for Sabre, who knows? That's just my observation. Now, I have not run the Western Digital software control panel while trying to do this test, because I'm, I'm looking for things that will uh, work with different drives. I know the Western Digital software works with the Western Digital drive, but I also know the Western Digital software will not work with the other drives. So I was really stoked when I saw what the Sabre software would do. And I thought after we did that first test, everybody will be downloading it. But after this, you're back to hardware info using just the sensors. So as the test performs, we're finished with the test. That gives us some idea. Nice performance. Of the three drives, I like the performance on that drive. And it performs the best after doing this test a second time. First test we did the first time was about speed. This time it was about heat and speed. So hope you guys enjoyed that. We're settling down on the hardware info sensor at 54 degrees and we're settling down on the FLIR camera at 54.6 degrees. And the digital thermometer, which is the thermistor across the drive you see right there, it's at 36.4. So our two most accurate readings are coming from the FLIR camera and from hardware info. And at 53.7 degrees, it'll take a while for that to cool down. When it started up, it was at about, I believe, 35 degrees before I even turned the machine on. That was because the heat sink was still hot from the last test. Usually I like to wait about 12 to 24 hours to repeat the test. But today, 
I needed to expedite. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of that. Thanks for watching. This is test number three of those three. The next, one, next video we're going to do, who knows, could be about NVMe RAID. Might be a Wacom tablet. Thanks for joining us. My name is Gil Boyd. On to the next question because this is one you guys asked. And on to the next video. We're out. <laughs>